Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to our first YouTube live session. Uh, my name is Aaron Peterson, and this is Sarah Perry. Hi, everyone. Uh, we are educational technology facilitators here at DDSB, and we are going to walk you through a fairly quick uh, introduction to Google Classroom. We know there's been lots of people waiting for trainings, looking for trainings, so we're going to just do a quick intro session and uh, get you started. If you would like to participate in the live chat, uh, you need to click in the window on the right under live chat and you will need to create a channel before you can start. To do that, you need to click your uh, icon in the upper right, your account icon, and there's and then go to my channel and you'll create a channel there. Once you've got a channel created, you, uh, that live chat will open in the on the right hand side and you'll be able to fire questions our way if you need them. Uh, we're happy to answer them as we go or change the direction uh, however you need. So we're gonna start uh, getting right into it and I'm gonna share my screen. Uh, so most of it, uh, you won't be looking at me, you'll be looking at, our, at our, my screen as I walk you through this. All right, so first we want to talk about what Google Classroom is and what it isn't. Uh, so we've just got a little, little list here. Google Classroom is um, an LMS, it, it, which is a learning management system. So our LMSs that we use in DDSB are Google Classroom, we use D2L or Brightspace, and we use Moodle. Google Classroom is probably the easiest to use of these. It's a really, really great platform for feedback, and it's an awesome place to have a digital workflow uh, to reduce that printing that we're doing, uh, cut down on that paper and, and kind of keep everything digital for our students and for you. Uh, Google Classroom, what it's not, is it's not a full-featured LMS. Things you may have had before uh, in an LMS, something like uh, discussion forums, uh, full rubrics, things like that are not built right into Google Classroom. Uh, grade reporting to parents, uh, full grade book, those things are not part of Google Classroom. It's also not the only LMS for Chromebooks. So while we're rolling Chromebooks out, that doesn't mean you need to abandon the other LMSs if you're using them. Or if you like them for certain things, you can easily mix uh, mix and match and pair between Google Classroom, D2L, Moodle, and combine the best of all of these platforms. Uh, all of those still work because they're web-based. They work great on the Chromebooks. That's not a problem. Uh, so you have some choice here. Uh, Google Classroom is also not the most friendly for group work. Uh, there's ways to get around it, and there's, there's some strategies you can use as you get deeper into it, uh, but it's not, it's not set up for setting up groups really easily and assigning things to groups like that. Uh, again, easy ways to get around that but you just need to know that going in, you won't be setting up groups and groupings uh, for discussion forms or assignments like you may have if you use Moodle or D2L. So to get to Google Classroom, uh, to start out, what we want to do is, is get to that home page. So for students and for staff, some of the, one of the easiest places to start is at Student Mobile Campus. So you can get to this through a link at, any, at the top of any uh, school page from the DDSB. You can type in student.ddsb.ca up here at the top and navigate here, and you'll find this button for Google Classroom here on the right-hand side of your screen. You can also uh, just type that URL is classroom.google.com, and that will get you right here as well. Once you get there, you really want to make sure that you are logged in with your DDSB account. Uh, Classroom is open to other to other uh, accounts outside the board, including your personal Gmail account. Uh, and while you could do some things there, you wouldn't want to be using having student work, uh, giving feedback or comments from them, because they don't have the same uh, privacy policies and uh, permissions that we do for student work and, and protections of that student intellectual property that we do in our DDSV G Suite accounts. So you can do that by just uh, hovering over here. You can see that this is under my name at ddsb.ca. So I know that this is my DDSB account. You just make sure that you're logged in there. Uh, signing into Chrome is a great way to do that. Clicking on the person up here, you can sign into Chrome. Make sure you're always signed into your DDSB account under that Chrome profile. Once you get to this page, you will see a blank page if you've never created a class. Uh, if you have classes, you'll see things like this, where you have cards for the classes. If you've never created one before, what we do is we go to this plus button. Uh, so just kind of navigate around this screen real quickly. Uh, this is your Google Classroom home screen. On the left side, you've got this menu button, and this will give you quick access to all your classes. So if I go through here, these are all my active classes. I can get back to my archive classes or go to my settings. 
but I can also jump between things very, very quickly. I can also jump to to-do list for me as a teacher or as a student if I was if I was in classes as a, as a student. Clicking out of there, uh, over here on the right-hand side, you have G Suite training icon. If you're signed into Chrome with your DDSB account, you'll have this extension loaded. Uh, that will give you some quick search top or uh, help topics here. These are videos that will walk you through some other things in Classroom. If you ever need them, they're actually really, really helpful, and they point and highlight things right on the screen for you even. Uh, finally, you've got that plus button. This is where you create or join a class. For students, when they click on that, they'll only have the option to join a class. But for teachers and all staff in the DDSB, we have the option to create a class as well. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to walk through creating a class right now. If I click on that Create Class, it's going to give me three options here. So I've got uh, my class name, my section, and my subject. So class name, I'm going to call this Getting Started with G Suite, or with Google Classroom, sorry. And the section and subject, I can leave blank. If you have multiple sections, you can add some more information. That will show up as little subheadings for you so you can organize and keep track of where you are in, in your classrooms. I'll click Create. It'll take just a couple of minutes to create that class. And what it's doing while it's doing this creation is actually setting up the back end for me. It's building a folder in my Google Drive where all this is built uh, and setting all the permissions for it and getting it ready to go. So here's my new Google Classroom. You can see it picked an image for me automatically. Because I said classroom, it picks this uh, image of a classroom. Uh, thankfully, none of our classrooms look like this, but this is the image that they pull from their library. And then it set the um, it set the color scheme based on that picture. So it's, it's done it all brown. If you want to change that picture, you can go over here to the lower right of that picture, and you'll see select theme or upload a photo. So if you have your own, you can put your own uploaded photo in, or if I select a theme, I'll get this gallery that uh, Google provides for me. So I've got all these photographs that are already formatted for this, or I can pick a pattern that's a little more abstract to make it a little simpler uh, and put that in for my class. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one, set that as my theme, you'll see it changes. You'll also see that the color scheme for the plus button and for my top bar and the background changes based on that. So before it was brown because that was in the picture. Now it's pulled all of this material like this. So this is uh, your main stream page for your classroom. In the middle is where everything is going to land for your students, this is where materials, assignments, announcements, everything lands in here. It's really kind of like a social media feed uh, where the newest things go at the top and other things get pushed down as you go. Uh, right now, this is blank because we just started it. Over here on the left, you'll see your due dates and your uh, any work you have that shows up there once you have due dates set. And then you have topics. Of course, we have no topics yet, but this is really a filtered view for your students. Uh, so when you're setting up your classroom, you have to decide how granular you want to make it. Uh, if you're an elementary teacher and you teach lots of subjects, you might want to have those subjects uh, for uh, each have their own Google Classroom. It's very easy for students to switch. I'll show you how fast it is to switch. So if I'm in here and I jump to another class that I have, I'm in it already. Uh, so it's really not, it's not a problem for students to have lots of classes over here, five or six or seven to jump between. Uh, to keep, it's, not a, it's not a problem for them keeping that work organized or, or uh, where it should be. So you usually have a language, a math, some people even split out to reading and writing. Uh, and then your topics could be units or strands within that. It depends on how you want to organize it organize your classroom and your stream. Finally, down here, we have a button to show deleted posts. This is just for teachers to be able to see. Students won't see that on their screen. Moving on up here, we've got, this, so this is the stream. Like I said, this is your main page. And we've got two other uh, tabs here. So I'm going to switch to the students tab real quickly. And this is where I would see my list of students. Now, I'm not going to ask you to join this classroom because uh, we're just going to go real quickly through this. But this is where you would see all the list of students you have in here. I'll jump to another class I have loaded and show you the students. So there's my student list right there in the middle. It shows me where all my, uh, who is currently in the class. There's two ways that we can get kids into our class, so, or, or uh, adult learners if we're using it that way. Uh, so we can invite our students by searching our directory. So if I invited a student in here, Type the name, find them in the directory, click invite, and they will have an invitation waiting for them on their on their main page. So Sarah would see that waiting for her. 
uh, once you log back into Classroom on our home screen and see an invite link there. But we can also have them enter themselves into a classroom. So if they were to uh, take this code and enter it in, then they could join this class. Uh, I can also display it larger if we need to put it on a projector and clicking this in the lower right corner will actually show it full screen so they can all type it in from the back of the classroom. The place students would do that uh, would be on that main screen. When they click on the plus button and join a class, they would just type that class code in here and click join and they would be a member of the class immediately and they would show up uh, joining that class right here in the list. The other thing that's important on this screen is to see uh, your settings here. Students can post and comment as is the default. When we get into commenting and posting, you'll see that this might not be uh, where you want to be. Usually we recommend that we have students can only comment, or if needed, you turn it off so that students can't comment at all. This just keeps your stream cleaner. If you have post and comment, it means every student can post uh, anything to the stream and other students can comment on it and it gets really cluttered, uh, and it's hard to find your assignments as they get pushed on the page chronologically. So students only commenting is our recommended setting for this. Uh, if your students are having trouble with posting inappropriate things or, or what should be posted or commented, you can turn that off for everyone, or we can uh, just stop uh, single students from posting. I'll just show you that in a minute. That's your student page. And then the final tab is the About tab. So as you're starting your Google Classroom, as you're setting it up, you're going to want to edit things on this page uh, to kind of give people uh, some class materials and, and just show them what your class is about. So it shows your teachers over here. Uh, really important is that you can invite teachers. So you can have co-teachers. I think the limit is 50 teachers on a single class. Uh, anybody you add as a co-teacher, uh, we'll be able to edit everything on that classroom. So they'll be able to add assignments, mark, uh, give comments and feedback back, grade things, all those kinds of things. Uh, just like a, uh, inviting a student, you would just click in here, type the name of your teacher that you want to invite, and then invite them. That teacher will get an email uh, letting them know they have an invitation waiting, and they'll be able to add it on the front page just like the students would. And you can remove them as well at any time if you change your mind and take them off that class. The nice thing about having a co-teacher is you can transfer ownership of a class. So if you have a classroom and you are going on a leave or you are an LTO and the person you're coming for is coming back, you can uh, actually, if you invite them, they join the class, they're a co-teacher in the class, you can transfer ownership of the class over to them and then remove yourself from the class. And it's a nice clean break, transfers all the students' work, everything in the classroom over to that teacher, uh, and then you move on. The other thing we can do with this with this uh, about page is add our class materials. So every time we post in Classroom, we have the option of putting a title or text and then adding pieces onto that uh, on that post. So things that we can add are attachments. These would be files, things like PDFs, Word documents, Google Docs, uh, anything that's a file that you have, images, movies, anything can be added through there. And you can pick from your computer to upload them. The second icon is our drive. So this will navigate to my Google Drive and show me things that I have available to attach uh, from my Google Drive. Next, I have YouTube videos. So if I click on this, I'll actually have a YouTube search that's safe search approved. So if I wanted to find something about math, I can search there and I can connect these in and add them in and they'll live right in there. The other thing I can add is a web link. So if I have my DDSB mobile campus link here, I'm going to copy this back to my classroom and I can add that in as a web link. And you'll see it will generate, uh, once I post this, it will generate a little preview image of that web link and pull the title from the page. If I add it again, if I added another class material here, I could change this link. So this calls it links, but I might call this student mobile campus. You'll see I can have multiple kind of cards or posts on this that are separated out. This is a great place to post those persistent links you want for your students all year. So things like um, course materials, so a syllabus, a classroom agreement, 
uh, your, a link to your class website or resources site that you may be built in Google Sites, uh, PDF of something that they refer to all the time, a rubric that you continually use over and over again, or just a collection of sites that you want them to be able to use on a regular basis. Uh, everything you put on here just pushes down the, down the stream, and you can only edit or delete. There's no moving these around. So you really want to pick your top five or 10 to put on this page to help students find those quickly. So go back to the stream, and we're going to talk a little bit about the different kinds of posts, different kinds of things you can add to your stream for your class. So going over here, this is where you start everything in Google Classroom. So this little plus button in the corner allows you to do all the things you're going to do on your stream here. You have four post types. You have create an announcement, create an assignment, create a question, or reuse a post. So we'll start at the bottom and work our way up really quickly through these. Click on create announcement. It's going to give me a little post window like this, and I'm going to add to, uh, to the class. So I will say follow this link, get to student campus. And then I have some choices on here. So I can assign it a topic. If I don't have one, I can create one. I could call this EdTech and create that topic. And then I can add any kind of those attachments again like I had before. So attach files from my Google Drive, YouTube videos, or a link. So this is going to be a link. Pass that in, paste that in, add the link, and then I can post it. When it lands on my stream, this is what it looks like for students. So when they go there, they would see the category there, or the topic, and they'll see my instructions here, and then the link to that site below it. It timestamps it up here, tells you who posted it. We set this so only teachers can post, so you know it's by the teacher. These are things that you don't expect students to interact with. So the things that they're going to click on, use, uh, view. It could be, like we said, a document or a website or uh, or any other kind of file, video file, uh, but it's not something that they're going to do work on and turn in. There's no due date to it. It's just an announcement. It's a resource for them. Next up, we're going to go to create an assignment. This, again, brings you that posting window. The only difference between this and the announcement is now you have a due date and you have expectations to collect things that you can grade or give feedback or comments on. Uh, so I would just enter the title of my assignment. give instructions if I choose to, but this is optional. I can add a due date. So I can make this due tomorrow. If I don't put a time on, it'll be due by midnight. If I put a time, I can make it very specific. And again, I can pick a topic either from what I have or creating one, uh, creating a new one, or I can leave it blank. Again, I have my attachments down here. Uh, the important thing about attachments is that I can mix and match these. So if I had a file that I needed people to see, I could add that file in, and I could add a link again. So I can stack different kinds of attachments, uh, and I can have different permissions on them. So here on this first one, I have a Google Doc, and I can change here. By default, the students can view the file, but I might want them to edit the file or make a copy for everyone to edit the file. These are important differences between these. If you have students who can edit a file, it means that everyone in the class is editing the same file at the same time. So you really want to think about it like students can collaborate on a file together uh, versus make a copy for every student, which means that everyone is working on their own document uh, and using their own, their own file. I'm going to leave this one as a view file, uh, and then I'm going to assign it. The other things I've got in here, sorry, I've got a couple more options I just want to go over. Uh, up here at the top, by default, it shows you my class that I'm in right now, and it's getting started for Google Classroom. But I can choose other classes that I'm in to post to multiple sections at the same time. So if I click on those boxes, it will post to those two classes all at the same time. If I'm posting to one class, I also have the option to differentiate for my students. If I had a long list of students, I could uncheck them and check only the students this would go to. Uh, then I could post a differentiated assignment, something with a different task. And I could uncheck them and check just those students that I didn't post the other assignment to. The students don't know that they get something different. It just shows up in their feed or it doesn't. 
So it's an awesome way uh, to give our kids different accommodations or modifications of the tasks that we're giving them. Uh, finally, next to assign, I have this little triangle button here that I can pull up and I can either assign it right now, schedule it, or save a draft. Scheduling allows me, again, to set a date and time where I can pin it right to a certain time. So I can have it post in the middle of class, five minutes before class. I have lots of flexibility uh, for how that lands on their stream and when it lands on their stream. I'm just going to sign this right now so you can see it. And there it is. So I've got my multiple attachments. I have a place that students can add a class comment. Class comments are something everyone sees. Uh, and then I have my documents there for them. Working up the chain, the next question, or the next post is a question. Creating a question is just that. Instead of having students type in, say, a Google Doc or something where you'd have to open the file to get all those responses, you can just act, ask a quick question. So if I add my question, again, I can cross post it. I can differentiate uh, between my students and add a due date or choose no due date if I want to leave it open. Uh, I've got two choices for how this is. I could do short answer or multiple choice. By multiple choice, I'm making basically a quick poll here. Instead of creating a whole form, I can just make it right here in, in classroom for a quick response. Or I can leave it open ended with a short answer. I also have some options here for a short answer. Students can reply to each other. It means they see each other's uh, answers. Or students can edit their answer. It means they can go back and change what they put in there before. On multiple choice, uh, I only have students can see a class summary. So that gives them kind of a bar graph, uh, tells them what other people answered for that multiple choice question. These questions, I can't make a quiz out of them. I can't make multiple, I can't make a six question uh, set here. It would only be a single question that I'm asking. So something I want quick data for. And again, like all my other posts, I have my attachment options. So I can attach from my drive or from my computer. I can put a YouTube video in or uh, a link, and I can have multiples again, just like before. Asking that lands that on the stream, and there it is. Finally, uh, in this post, I have reuse a post. At the top is reuse a post. So this might be uh, sometime if I were using something from a previous class, either this year or, or an archived class from before, uh, I can pull that up. So if I have a class uh, right here that I've archived, that I've closed up for the year, I can uh, find a task in there and add that in here. Okay, So I can, I can take this question and reuse it, or this assignment and reuse it. Once I can click a reuse, it's not actually posting it right to the feed. It's just giving me the starting template. So it's just giving me kind of the shell to start with. I can make any attachment I want, or sorry, any adjustment I wanted. I can change the names. Again, cross posting, changing my students. I can change the topic if I want to. Uh, pull from my topics from this class. I can change the due date, change this, add files, do anything I want to adjust it. But it kind of got me started. It pulled in the documents I had before, the names, all the, all the instructions were there to kind of get me a, a starting point. I'm gonna go ahead and save this one as a draft just to show you how that works. So I've saved that as a draft. Now you see at the top of my stream, it didn't go there, but I have a save post uh, button here at the top. So I click that, these are things I'm working on. So these, these are things that weren't ready to go out. I just saved them as a draft. I could pull this up and edit it at any time uh, before assigning it. So it just kind of sits there. Students do not see save posts. They're only for, uh, for teachers. They're just drafts that you're working on. I'm going to jump over now into a class I already had started so you can see what it looks like when students submit assignments. So this is an assignment uh, that I put in another classroom. I have five students in this class, and you can see the data over here. So four are not done, and one has been submitted. Students do not see this view. It's just for teacher view. Uh, so you can keep track really quickly of where your students are at with, a, with an assignment. Clicking into the assignment will show me uh, that teacher or this teacher view of who is done, who is not done. So I've got one person done. You can see right here it says that Sarah's done, and these all are not done. It also sorts them over here on the left. The dones are at the at the top. The not dones are below. You can change that sort. 
by going to first or last name, but by default, it always puts your done ones at the top in alphabetical order. If I click on Sarah's name, I'll actually see everything that she's done here. So I'll see if she's attached more than one file. I can see uh, the files that I gave out uh, for this assignment. Click on that, automatically shares this with me. Because she's turned it in, it actually transferred ownership over to me, and now I've got her documents so I can put feedback and comments in. So if Sarah gave this, turned this in, I can make a comment on her picture here, on the sidebar by selecting it and commenting. And press comment to put this in the sidebar. So these are comments that I can leave on my student's document and give them some feedback right in the document. Once I'm done, I can just close that out because it saves automatically and Sarah can see that feedback once I return the document. Really important here, uh, I've got this bottom bar too to add private comments. So I can add a comment to Sarah about her overall work. And post that and she'll see that. This is really important when you have an assignment that maybe is not a Google Doc. So here we've seen a Google Doc that's been copied, but students can submit anything. You can actually post an assignment uh, in your feed, if I go back to my class, that doesn't have a, a task connected or a, a template connected with it. So I can create an assignment. Now I'll just call this uh, journal writing, journal response, and I'm going to have I'm going to have my students respond in any way that they want. So maybe one student wants to make a video, one student wants to make a slideshow, uh, somebody wants to do some writing, maybe make an art piece and take a picture of it. You can do all those things. So now when students go into that, they'll actually have two buttons. Uh, one will show add and one will show create. And it gives them a chance to either create a Google file right there or add from something else, maybe a movie file they've created on their phone uh, or on, a, on another mobile device and bring it in that way. And they can attach any kind of file to this and give me a chance. Uh, to, to see those files that are not Google files. When that happens, then private comments is the only place I'd be able to give that feedback to the student. Uh, again, once I'm in the student view, I've got Sarah's here, I've got her comment there, and I can give her a grade. So by default, it's out of 100 points up here at the top, but we can make it ungraded, or we could change it to uh, a point value, say if we did a four scale, I can update that and give her any uh, any kind of point scale that I want. Let's say we're a level three, and I'm sa saving my grade there, gives her her grade. When I'm done, you can see the ones I've marked, uh, Sarah's is checked off, so I can return this uh, task to her. Sarah won't see these comments on the bottom or in the document until I return it to her, uh, and then she'll have her feedback back. If you mark all your students at once, you can return the whole batch at once, uh, once they're all marked, uh, and no one gets them earlier or later, they all just get them when you return the whole stack. Uh, the other thing we have in here in the student view of the assignments is the history. So click on the history, I can see all the history of this document. She turned it in at 231, and then we did a bunch of changes to it with the grading scale. We, did, we made changes here on the grading scale, and then it was returned at this time. So this is a great, uh, way to talk to students about resubmitting, unsubmitting, uh, doing those things. The students can unsubmit or resubmit work at any time uh, based on your feedback or to improve, improve their work. Back on this main screen, uh, now that we have some topics, I'll just show you how those work really quickly and then we'll be wrapped up. So I tagged a couple of things, EdTech. If I click on that topic now, all it does is shows me uh, the highlighted feed of just this EdTech topic. So we tagged one item on the stream as that, and now you see that. These other topics, we didn't tag anything with, so it doesn't find any posts. So these are not different classrooms. They're all posts from that main stream. Uh, they're all posts from here. It's just a filtered view of only the things with that topic in them. So oh, that's a quick overview of Google Classroom. Uh, this session will be recorded or, or available on YouTube so you can watch it later or pass it on to other people that couldn't be here live with us. Uh, 
and get a quick start on Google Classroom. Uh, we're always happy to help you to reach out to one of the EdTech facilitators to help you get going if you have any questions. Uh, if you want a more in-depth view uh, or look at Google Classroom, uh, we encourage you to visit our ILP On Demand. You can get there through D2L on the Student Mobile Campus page, and then select uh, Teacher Resources in the upper left corner, and choose ILP Courses On Demand, where we have much more in-depth courses, uh, including introduction to G uh, Google Suite, Google Classroom, D2L, Moodle, the other LMSs, uh, and some other ones. Uh, these are closer to two-hour courses, but they're all at your own self-paced, so you can do them at any time, start and stop at your leisure, uh, but give you a more in-depth and, and uh, full overview of Google Classroom. All right, thanks for joining us today. I hope you have a great day.